Hello and welcome to worship at St. James United Methodist Church. My name is CJ Lord. I'm the youth minister here at St. James and it is good to be with you in worship this morning. As we begin in worship, I would like to share a few of the exciting events going on here at St. James. First off, today in worship, we are doing our annual blessing of the backpacks. We will be praying over all of our students that are going back to school. We will be praying for their parents as they're having to get them ready to go back to school. And for our teachers who are taking, getting ready for another school year of investing in young people in our community. Please know that if you are a teacher or a student that is worshiping with us virtually this morning, that we are also keeping you in prayer and lifting you up as well. And I pray that you will join us in praying for the teachers and for the students and for the parents of students here at St. James United Methodist Church. Also coming up this week, we have our Red Cross Blood Drive. It will be in the, uh, Saint, at St. James United Methodist Church. They are in desperate need of blood donations, and we pray that uh, you might consider donating blood this week at St. James United Methodist Church. Finally, on August the 22nd, right after our 11 o'clock service, we will be doing our Rise Against Hunger event. This is the event that we were going to do before COVID, and we are so excited that we are now finally able to do it in person with all of you. It'll take place in our activities building. We will be packing food to send to places all over the world where people are suffering from food insecurity. And we need 80 volunteers. And so maybe God is calling you to help serve our community in this way. Let us prepare our hearts and our minds as we continue in worship. And as we continue in worship with a time of prayer, I want to invite all of you that if there is anything that we can be praying with you or for you about in your life, to please let us know here at St. James United Methodist Church. You can reach out to any of the pastors here on staff or the office here at the church. And as we go to the Lord in prayer, we want to lift up these members of our community that they might be held in God's care. Sandra Bottoms, Dick Gerald, Rhett McGee, Larry Stallings, Tink Trexler, and Ann Wadley. Let us pray. God, you have called forth the church to embody your way of life. Help those who profess faith in Christ to be faithful disciples and live according to your word. For all who follow Jesus Christ, Lord, hear our prayer. Your children imitate you by speaking truth, showing forgiveness, and dwelling together in loving community. For our neighbors and our neighborhoods, that we may live in peace and justice, O oh Lord, hear our prayer. God, our civic leaders face daily challenges and temptations. For government officials, that they may have integrity of heart and wisdom of judgment and their performance of public service, O oh God, Hear our prayer. God, the people of earth hunger for the spiritual food you provide that gives meaning to life. But many also hunger for good bread, for safe drinking water, and for the bare necessities of life. For those who struggle against the dehumanizing power of poverty, and for those who pursue justice, and the sharing of the earth's resources. O oh Lord, hear our prayer. God, your world is filled with the delights of natural beauty. 
but also with danger of natural disaster. For the planet Earth, our home, that people may dwell in peace with the land, honoring its beauty, taking care of its resources. O Lord, hear our prayer. Merciful God, hear the prayers of your people and grant that what we ask in faith we may receive according to your gracious love through Jesus Christ our Lord, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. We are continuing our series through the book of Psalms. Last week, we began with Psalm 100, a psalm of thanksgiving, offering God thanks for God's mercy and provision for us, God's grace extended to us. Today, we hear a psalm that is a cry for help. These two expressions, thanks and help, many people feel are some of our most basic prayers. We turn to God when we are needing help, needing intervention in our life, and we turn to God in moments of gratitude to express our wonder and thanks. As we prepare to hear the words of the 86th Psalm today, let us go to God in prayer. Lord, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit, that as the scripture is read and your word proclaimed, we might hear with joy what you say to us today. Amen. Incline your ear, O Lord, and answer me, for I am poor and needy. Preserve my life, for I am devoted to you. Save your servant who trusts in you. You are my God. Be gracious to me, O Lord, for to you do I cry all day long. Gladden the soul of your servant, for to you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. For you, O Lord, are good and forgiving, abounding in steadfast love to all who call on you. Give ear, O Lord, to my prayer. Listen to my cry of supplication. In the day of my trouble, I call on you, for you will answer me. There is none like you among the gods, O Lord, nor are there any works like yours. All the nations you have made shall come and bow down before you, O Lord, and shall glorify your name. For you are great and do wondrous things. You alone are God. Teach me your way, O Lord, that I may walk in your truth. Give me an undivided heart to revere your name. I give thanks to you, O Lord, my God, with my whole heart, and I will glorify your name forever. For great is your steadfast love. Toward me you have delivered my soul from the depths of Sheol. O God, the insolent rise up against me. A band of ruffians seeks my life, and they do not set you before them. But you, O Lord, are a God merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and faithfulness. Turn to me and be gracious to me. Give your strength to your servant. Save the child of your serving girl. Show me a sign of your favor so that those who hate me may see it and be put to shame because you, Lord, have helped me and comforted me. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Today in our services in the sanctuary, we are having a time of prayer for our schools, a blessing of the backpacks and prayers for teachers, school administrators. 
I was reminded this week of a time when I was getting ready to start back to school. I think I was in the seventh grade and our Sunday school teacher gave those of us in her class this little book entitled, If God Loves Me, Why Can't I Get My Locker Open? It was a collection of devotions designed for uh, kids in sort of the middle school age. And it talked about all the different things that kids might be anxious about, nervous about, the things they were excited about in uh, going back to school. A lot of those devotions were based on some selections from the book of Psalms. I don't have the book anymore, but I remember that as I read those devotions, one of the things that amazed me was how in the Psalms there were not just great songs of thanksgiving like we heard last week, but there were also cries of deep distress, cries for God to help, like the psalm we just read this morning, the 86th psalm. It's one of those psalms attributed to David. Think about David, the king of Israel, praying these words. The other thing that book that I got when I was in middle school reminded me was that God is concerned about all of our life. When we go to God in prayer, God wants us to be honest, to share our struggles as well as our triumphs, to turn to God, not just saying, here's what's going on, but expecting that God wants to and will intervene in our lives. This psalm, this cry for help, I think offers us some great pointers just for our prayer life in general. David calls out to God because David is confident that God will hear him. He says, I cry out to you all the day long. If you think about the whole story of David, David is a man who we see some of the, the greatest achievements accomplished through David. And yet the Bible story also tells us of some of David's greatest failures. David is, is one of those characters that the Bible doesn't try to gloss his life. He tells you, the Bible tells you about the success as well as the struggles that David faced. This psalm seems to be set at a time when David was being persecuted, probably by foreign kings and, and armies. And in the midst of that, he turns to God, asking for God not just to hear him, but to respond. That's the second thing. David is not only confident that God will hear, but he is confident that God is able to intervene. One of the beautiful things about Psalm 86 is almost all of these words are found in other places of the Bible. It's like a quilt work. It's like David has taken bits and pieces, phrases that re-echo through the Old Testament, and yet woven them together here in this prayer that is a unique new piece. Like a quilter will take patches of different cloth to create a beautiful new blanket. David weaves into this story echoes from the story of the Exodus, celebrating God's steadfast love and mercy. Words that Moses sang after the Israelites marched through the Red Sea. And then God closed back the waters on the Egyptian army. We read there in Exodus that Moses and the Israelites broke out into a song of praise to God. And some of those phrases are picked up here in Psalm 86. 
those events that are called to mind by these stories from Israel's past are what convinces David not only that God can hear, but God has the ability to respond as well. When we pray the Lord's Prayer, there is that line that we have towards the end of the prayer. Deliver us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. That is a cry and an acknowledgement that God is able to lead us away from danger and temptation. It is that same confidence that God is able to respond in our lives. The other thing that is evident in this psalm, it begins with, with a high note of praise, and then in the very middle we get the sense of the, the danger and the struggle that David is going through. And then it returns to, and yet I shall praise you. It, it is a reminder for us that prayer is not an isolated part of our lives. That our lives flow into our prayers and out of our prayers. What I mean by that is we can take whatever is going on in our life and offer it in prayer to God, either as a thanks or as a cry for help. But we should expect to be changed through that encounter with God, through that conversation with God. David, in the midst of his need, crying out in his pain, he says, you have delivered me from the depths of Sheol. Sheol in the Old Testament is where it was thought people would go to after death. You have delivered me from death. And I will return to praise you. That is, he expects his life to be different and he is calling for God to Help him be even more dedicated in the years to come because he is confident in God's ability to help. As I think about this psalm and, and the things that it can teach us about prayer, I'm reminded of one of my favorite books on prayer. It's by a Catholic theologian, Hans von Balthasar. And he begins his book on prayer by saying, prayer is answering speech. What he means by that is that the Bible begins by saying God spoke. God spoke creation into being. Prayer is not just a, a cry in the dark. It is a cry who has, to a God who has already been speaking to us. And we respond to God. And then we open our lives. We expect for God to respond yet again to us. It is a reminder that our life is meant to be a dialogue with God. That, yes, there are devoted times of prayer. There are those times in our day. There are times in our worship service where we consciously focus on prayer but those are meant to build within us a sense of God's always being with us. And we can always be in conversation with God. Thanks be to God for his abiding, steadfast presence in our lives. Amen.
As we end our time of worship together, may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The countenance of the Lord rise upon you and give you peace, now and forevermore. Amen. Thank you.